Well, since I'm back in the office and I'm able to work on some more videos, there's been a lot that I've missed. Specifically, one thing yesterday where the co-creator of Dungeons & Dragons, specifically 5th edition, as well as the franchise creative director, Mike Merrills, issued a very inflammatory tweet. Now, many, and I mean many, fans of Dungeons & Dragons have reached out to me and hope to get some help and hope to shine some light, to shed some light on the current situation in Dungeons & Dragons. Most people that play D&D that I've talked to have basically stopped purchasing new books and have told me that the social justice slant that I so greatly oppose in Magic the Gathering has been infecting Dungeons and Dragons for many more years. And I've been wanting to dig into this. I've been waiting for the right time to do so. And Mike Merrill's Uh, made it abundantly clear that he has a problem with the majority of men in his game. He sounds, in my opinion, like someone who hates men in general, like a standard, basic feminist ally. I want to read out a tweet that this man put out. He is, of course, located in Seattle. Big surprise. Again, D&D, just like Magic the Gathering, I, in my opinion are probably more than 80% male, maybe 90% in in some cases, especially if we look at the most enfranchised players or the competitive players when I talk about Magic the Gathering. And the tweet that this man put out had 2,500 retweets as well as nearly 10,000 favorites. Again, we know that often... If we look at, for example, Marvel Comics, most of the people signal boosting this type of message, most of the people interacting with this type of message, they don't play the game. If they played the game, comics like Squirrel Girl would sell 20,000 issues every time it came out. Miss Marvel would sell 25, 30,000. Iceman would sell 20, 30,000. But alas, all these titles had to be canceled. Why, might you ask? It's not because fans of comics or fans of something like Dungeons & Dragons dislike women. It's because they dislike greatly social justice. And it's tweets like this that are killing the game. Let me share with you what Mike Merrill's Again, co-creator of Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition, as well as Dungeons & Dragons franchise creative director, shared with his subscribers. And I quote, Funny how many of those same fans who insist on gatekeeping via rules complexity and lore density also have a problem with women in tabletop gaming. Hey guys, you're all fired from D&D. Find another game. Now Mike, of course, provided no evidence of this. Not even anecdotal. He just lied. This is quite frankly and very simply, no other way to put it, a lie. A ideological lie. First I want to look at Mike's history. You know, reaching the pinnacle of one of the co-creators of D&D and again the franchise creative director he must have a deep and rich history in this sort of thing let's see what you've been doing with your life Mike you worked at Wizards of the Coast your first position was quote senior manager Dungeons and Dragons and design you took that position in June 2005 Before that, you worked at a place for a whopping three months, Paizo, which we know is rampant with social justice. And you worked for a year as a, quote, game designer at Malhavik Press. Nobody's heard of it. And you were self-employed for three years before that. 
Well, I assume you must have some sort of good education. Oh, you're a sales engineer, by the way, at Return Path for one year. Basically, you have no real job experience, nothing to be proud of. You've bounced around in the gaming community, and that's about it. You went to Dartmouth. Fancy name. You achieved a four-year degree, and I'm sure something that is gaming-related, geography. You have a four-year degree in geography. You also happen to list that you went to Hogwarts, School of Wizardry, where you, quote, made hella magic spells. So we can see that Mike Merrills is obviously an extraordinarily qualified game designer with a long and illustrious career working for important gaming companies. Well, actually, he's worked for nobody for no period amount, of, no no meaningful amount of time. He is an entrenched Wizards of the Coast employee. This is very common for Magic: The Gathering. People that work their way to the top by hook or by crook, now with experience, now with making a difference, but by keeping their head down and subscribing, in my opinion, to a company-wide ideology. Let's see if you bothered to reply. The number one, hey, Mike, question. In your opinion, as long as the players are having fun and agree, is it impossible to, quote, break the game by changing a huge rule? He replies, I agree that D&D might be a sh the shared starting point, but your group may have indeed have needed to shift some rules to make it work. I'm sorry, needed some shift to really make it work. When I look at some of the other top replies, it looks like when I saw this earlier, there were a lot of replies of people asking for evidence. I assume, I can only assume that he's blocked them because when I first saw this tweet, the top reply was asking for any sort of scientific evidence, any sort of Uh, surveys of the crowd. Let's see if we can find that. Here we go. 122 favorites. Basic TV says, is there any data behind this statement? Curiously, Mike has not replied to this person. Mike replied to a person here who clearly agrees with his ideology, but one of the Literally one of the top replies. Here, I mean, I feel you, but women can also enjoy rules, complexity, and lower density. I agree. Women are not dumb. See, your, your tweet here appears to insinuate that women are dumb. That women can't possibly play D&D due to rules, complexity, and lower density. It seems like a typical male feminist who views women as a protected class, as a gender that needs simple games and simple lore to enjoy the game. Now, this wrong thinker down here was replied to. It's pretty easy to see a correlation. Maybe not so much as a man playing the game, but trust me, it's there. As I love rules and complexities too, but I don't gatekeep. But the men who do gatekeep, the dots are easy to connect once you meet them. 70 favorites. Again, a statement backed by nothing. This is a statement of opinion. I was wondering if the surveys, if there's survey data we can examine or anything like that. Personal observations can get you only so far. This I agree with. There's enough documented stories, personal experience, and examples of gatekeeping and prejudice against women, in particular in gaming. I do not see how a survey would be more concrete than staggering and heartbreaking amount of testimonials from first-hand accounts. Notice that Adian here, who is also a dungeon master, according to his Twitter profile, provides no links, provides no evidence of personal experience, no evidence of quotes, 
videos, nothing. To which he's replied, I am a PhD student. I see through the world. I see the world through numbers. That's why I asked for data. I get that you may have a different perception of the world. A totally normal reply. Please provide evidence. If you're going to paint the entire D&D community with this disgusting brush, you should, what's the quote? Fantastic claims require fantastic evidence. Something along those lines. Yet we see in 2,500 retweets and nearly 10,000 favorites, no evidence. As a PhD student, Misty, so why did you put a parenthesis around PhD student? Are you calling him a liar? That's what it seems like to me. How would you even begin to gather these numbers exactly? Through surveys, Watsi runs them regularly. Basuk is 100% correct. Wizards of the Coast run surveys all the time. Yet nobody's quoting them. Yet there is no actual scientific evidence of any of this. To which she replies, And you think that would be accurate? At your level of education, one would think you would know many women are unwilling to share their experiences and how many men do you know would admit they do this. So let me decode what Misty's saying here. Even if you have scientific evidence, even if you have empirical data, you should ignore that as a doctoral study and listen to anecdotal evidence. Now, I don't know about you guys and gals out there, but if I went to my doctor and I wasn't feeling well or I had some sort of rash, I would not want my doctor to say, well... I heard on the street that if you just take hypodermic needles out of the garbage bins at casinos and rub them on your rash, this is going to cure your rash. No, no. I would want my doctor to use actual scientific evidence. Also, how do you envision the process of, quote, firing your customers? Will we hear a statement from Watsi on this shortly? And her reply, as a man, looks like she's um, guessing his gender. He did not say he was a man. She's not using, quote, she's assuming his gender. Why are you so offended by this personal statement, opinion, followed by a joke? Is it ringing true? So what Misty is saying here, I'm a led, I assume she's a woman. Maybe she's not. She's saying, ignore the facts. Ignore the evidence. Listen and believe. Misty clearly does not attend evident, uh, events like Gen Con like I do. Like other people in this thread must. Because I'm sorry. Women are not being gatekept out of D&D. &D. As somebody who would love to play any role-playing game with a diverse crowd of people. I don't care what gender people are. I play Warhammer Fantasy RPGs on Sunday with Arch Warhammer. And when he asked me to play, I didn't ask him how many girls were there. I didn't ask him how many guys were there. I said, hey, it's been a while since I've done a role-play game. Can you explain the rules to me? I just held a private event this week in Indianapolis with about 60 Magic players. There were a few females there, but not many. None of them seemed misogynistic to me. None of them seemed to be the gatekeeping type. It seems to me, as the co-creator of Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition and the current D&D franchise creative director, it's kind of irresponsible to paint the majority of your fans is misogynistic and as gatekeepers because that is what your tweet Mike Merrill's that's what it insinuates it also insinuates that you ex expect to continue to collect a salary if as you put it a large portion of the gaming community were to simply stop buying your books now I know a lot of people that play Warhammer simply download the books 
of torrent websites. I wonder why that is. I mean, maybe if the company producing their game didn't constantly shit on them, they might be willing to give you some of their dollars. But a well-educated man like Mike Merrill's, who clearly understands things like gender science and data with his geography degree and his four-year degree at Hogwarts must know better than all of the people that play D&D. Now, the people that play D&D, in my experience, are smart individuals. Both men and women who dedicate their time to things like D&D are not stupid. But Mike Merrill's thinks they are. He thinks women are stupid. He thinks women can't play D&D because the game is too complex. He apparently thinks that women don't play D&D because the lore is too dense. I, on the other hand, think women are perfectly intelligent. They're just as smart as men. And if they were interested in Dungeons and Dragons, they would play it. Mike Merrills, you're a disgusting human. You are not an ally of women. You are a sexist individual who thinks women are dumb. You think women are not as smart as men. You think the reason women don't play D&D is because they can't possibly comprehend the, as you put it, rules complexity and lore density. You, Mike Merrills, are ruining Wizards of the Coast. You are one of the first people that should go in this company. You offer no value. You have a terrible opinion of your customers, and you should be ashamed of yourself.